Coca-Cola, a symbol of America, and one of our favorite drinks. But could you imagine? This favorite drink of yours was actually the idea of a dying soldier. Do you know how Coca-Cola was produced? John Stith Pemberton was born in the small town of Knoxville in 1831 and was raised in Rome, Georgia. He received his license to practice Thomi and medicine when he was just 19 years old. He was not well respected at the time, but that didn't stop John from launching a Materia Medica focused company. However, he was soon forced to replace his white lab coat with a buttoned uniform. The Civil War had broken out and John was promoted to first lieutenant. In 1865, three years into the battle, he was caught in a direct line of fire and slashed with a saver. His doctors did not believe that he would survive and gave him morphine to relieve his pain in his final hours. He, on the other hand, proved them wrong and miraculously survived. When the smoke of the Civil War was cleared, John had some different ideas in his head. He relocated his family to Atlanta and worked as a senior member of Pemberton, Wilson, Taylor & Company in Dallas, Texas. Later on, John became known as Atlanta's most famous physician. But did you know? John was struggling behind closed doors. After his near-death experience, he became addicted to morphine. With no cure in sight for what had become a daily occurrence, he sought an herbal remedy. He had heard good things about a drink called Vin Marini at the time. It was said to cure any ailment because it contained ground-up cocoa leaves and red wine. That inspired John to create his own version to help him overcome his morphine addiction. He made Pemberton's French wine coca out of coca leaves, red wine, and cola nuts. Coca leaves were known to be a stimulant as well as a suppressant of hunger, thirst, fatigue, and pain. While one loaf contained 0.35% cocaine, it was easy to obtain in the United States. Even according to some doctors and pharmacists, it's a possible cure for opium and morphine addictions. With this belief, John established a distribution network to sell his remedy in order to assist other war veterans. The remedy was an instant success and many people used it. However, demand alone was insufficient to sustain the business. When John faced a challenge, he was forced to pivot his new business. And as a result, Coca-Cola was invented. Pemberton's French wine cola was introduced to the market in 1885, but Atlanta announced that it would join other cities in banning alcohol. John rushed to create a new remedy to avoid obsolescence. The cola nuts bittered the wine when he removed it. He added sugar, citric acid, vanilla, lemon oil, orange, nutmeg, and coriander extracts to the synthetic caffeine. Following that, John's bookkeeper, Frank Robinson, suggested changing the name to Coca-Cola. However, he insisted on spelling it with two C's because it would be more visually appealing. In 1886, John took his advice and launched his new remedy, Coca-Cola. And here's how this name came into the market. Initially, it was a complete disaster. The first year sales peaked at $50, with a total supply cost of $70. But John's optimism led to another great idea, using banners, streetcar signs, and store awnings to advertise the cure. Fortunately, Coca-Cola became popular in Atlanta. When faced with a challenge, John and Frank demonstrate that tackling it, rather than giving up, can lead to new heights of success. They believed it would one day become a national drink and set aside a third of his stock for his son Charles. Charles was in charge of manufacturing at the time, but he later became a morphine addict himself. Frank was concerned that Coca-Cola would be left with no one to guide John's vision of going national. As John remained bedridden, he took on the responsibility of finding the right investor. He met Asa Candler, a wealthy and hardworking entrepreneur, through a business contact. Asa liked what the company wanted to do, so he bought the rights to the Coca-Cola name and recipe. John's vision for Coca-Cola helped his employees believe in him and later the man who had helped build the brand of the company. Regrettably, John never got to see his entire vision come to fruition. And the company kept growing and see where it lies today. So this is the story of how a pharmacist turned war veteran and his successors built a $74 billion Coca-Cola brand. Hit the bell icon if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.